Welcome back to the show. We are with Dean Peter Beck and Alec Neal. Well, earlier this week, 14 famous New Zealanders descended on uh, the steps of Parliament, urging the government to get cracking on alcohol reform. Uh, one of the many debates uh, under the reform umbrella pertains to the price of alcohol and is alcohol too cheap in this country? Sir Paul Reeves cited the fact that uh, you can walk into any supermarket and basically buy three bottles of wine for $20. He thinks we must get rid of that. Is it too cheap for our own good? Absolutely right. I mean, I'm, I'm really glad they went to Parliament. We've got to keep this thing moving for fear that the government, being so pragmatic as it is, will actually sort of ease off. The alcohol lobby, the alcohol industry lobby, is huge. You know, there are 700,000 heavy drinkers in this country. You know, we know the issues, the binge drinking, the preloading that happens before kids get on the buses coming into town. That's all cheap booze that's provided from them from somewhere. Mm. They may not get it from the supermarket, but they're getting it from somewhere. They're preloading, coming into town, and off you go. Uh, a few weeks ago, I managed to infiltrate a meeting. There was, um, there's, there's about nine people who are in the front line of this, from hospitals, police, St John's Ambulance, healthy Christchurch and stuff, and they presented to our MPs, some of whom had the courtesy to turn up. And um, it was shocking. I mean, when you hear all this stuff and what's going on and the damage it's doing, and as they said, it's not, it's not the drinking, it's how we're drinking. Mm. And it's, we have to, it's a serious, it's an absolutely fundamental issue that we've got to get sorted. And part of it is the price. Um, and now, and, you know, it's, it's fine. I mean, I can go to Pack and Save and find, whoa, that's great, Central Otago wine from Five dollars. 39 bottles to mm. about 10 or something. Mm. But it's scandalous, actually. It's, it's but if accessible you, at that price. Yeah, although this is where it surely collides massively head on with personal responsibility. I would imagine you are the well, very responsible drinker. Well, that's the responsibility of the alcohol industry. What are they doing? They're, they're promoting Alco Pops and stuff like that to you youngsters. You won't drink those, though, No, I you? won't, but the no. kids will. Mm. They're, and they're promoting cheap vodka, you know, whatever it is, about $11, $12 a bottle or something. And, and they target they target young people. It's, it's terrible. It's but, scandalous. But given I'm sure you are a responsible drinker yourself, of course, Michael. why should you have to pay through the nose for your favourite bottle of wine that may be but, on special no, at the supermarket? Yeah, but one of the issues you have about that is we've become such a consumerist, individualistly focused society. How about healthy communities? What part do I play in enabling the community to be a more healthy environment than it is? Maybe that's a price I have to pay because yeah. I care about the, the community I care about others, I care about young people and others. So we, we have to introduce more reasonable licensing hours. When I was a kid, which is a long time ago, as you pointed out to me, I'm an ageing... I would never uh, be so rude. My dad was a... I was born in a pub, yes. you know, in the UK. The pub would open at half past ten, mm. it would close at half past two, open again at six and close at half past ten, and we'd ring a bell, mm. time ladies and gentlemen please. And there was, you know, it was, you know, people had drank too much from now and again, but it was manageable. Then in this country, or whatever we had, we suddenly opened it up. And you could drink the, some of the freest licensing laws in the world. So we Madness. can't be trusted so with that. To put, no, we can't. <laughs> we've got to put the genie back in the bottle. It's not, it's not about being illiberal, it's just yeah. about being sensible. Is this a case of we are all in this together, Alec, and we've got to stop being in denial? <laughs> well, well I, I am a champion for healthy Christchurch, and uh, since leaving ECAN, no one's written me a letter to say that I've been removed as one of their champions. <laughs> um, but I, I have to say, Peter's sort of taking a bit of a wowser attitude to this, uh, in my opinion. <laughs> um, first of all, the cheap, cheap wine in supermarkets. Look, that's not what the young teenagers are getting drunk on. Um, um, cheap wine is available for old people like me that ferret around in a supermarket and uh, say, how can I go to a party and not offend by buying a bottle of wine that's between $20 at the top and 5 at the sure. bottom, so I buy but, that $10 bottle. But what about your, your cheap yeah. uh, mixer drinks, your Al cheap Alco Pops, Alco Pops and the are cheap the spirits like vodka yeah. and Alco so on? Alco Pops cheap... are the problem, mm. but also parents are the sure. problem. And okay. Whether you like it or not, parents go to the supermarkets yeah. and they buy yeah, a six-pack for their 15-year-old daughter sure. because there's an expectation sure. otherwise she's out of it and mum that's totally unfair so would you sure. be okay if the government targeted increases in uh, alcohol excise on the the drinks the kids love the rtds the alcohol pops <coughs> and maybe even spirits I, I don't think it'll stop them buying them um let me make that but clear they won't be able I, to buy I've, as I've much happen, will they? i've seen this happen with cigarettes we're going to stop smoking by increasing the price of cigarettes it doesn't stop smoking what we've got to do is... But he's reduced yes, it has. Oh, no, come on. Well, the you, smoke you have given know, up no, no, smoking, so no, no, therefore no, no, you've, been, you've become no, no, a wowsy no, 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 yourself. But, but the figures all show, <laughs> and it took a long time, over 20 years, we've reduced the incidence of smoking amongst many people. Not, not all groups, but 
many groups. And part of it, you remember you start when we had the original labels on the packets and they moved from smoking can damage your health to this huge thing. Yeah. We, Doug Selman, who was a great you know, adver, uh, alcohol advisory council, he showed two ads that are now going uh, up on our screens. One was about smoking and it was a diseased lung yeah. on there showing what happens. And the other one was that uh, the ad with three or four very handsome looking young women and a fire engine talking about uh, TUI. Yes. I mean, all that stuff that goes with that but, kind of advertising. What, what we should be looking at, Peter, is within the schools, it is unacceptable to drink till you drop. Absolutely. And that's what young people are doing because yeah. it's fashionable to drink till you drop. Now, most of us, when we went to university for the first year, we did exactly that, mm -hmm. but but we learnt very quickly. Nowadays, 15-year-olds are doing that. It's not because the age is 18. They're doing it because mm -hmm. somebody is supplying them with that liquor. But wouldn't it's Doug Selman say, Alec, if you put the uh, a minimum pricing on alcohol right across the board, mm -hmm. it is going to cut right into the heart of our binge drinking culture. It's purely because yep. of disposable income. You're not going to have so much money sure. to get hammered. And it's not just a young people's issue. It's, a, it's across oh. the board. It's not just a young people's issue. Alcoholism and I, I, is not. And I think, yeah, indeed. Mm. And I think you, you've got to do something about the advertising. Like we do with mm. smoking. We did stuff with that. We've got to do about the age. I think that needs to change. Uh, it's not going to make much difference in some ways. We've got yeah. to do something about the price. Uh, we've got to do something about the way in which things like the party buses. I mean, the stuff that was going on in the council a couple of weeks ago. I remember talking to Bob Parker, and he said, these bus people came, and he was telling us, well, it sounded like they were all being taken to a garden party somewhere. <laughs> you know, and, but in fact, when you talk to the police and others about what happens yep. when these buses come in, it was a really interesting story. I've got 30 seconds. Yeah, 30, yep. Good Friday, uh, emergency department, no, nothing, everything was closed. There was not one alcohol-related incident mm -hmm. at, at all in the emergency but department. We, nothing at all. Easter Saturday, the next day, holy, you know, everything was open. The place was packed. Yeah. The corridors were full. There were at least 13 serious alcohol-related incidents, including five broken jaws. Must yeah, say but allowing right? hotels to close at 3 and 4 and 5 in the morning is ridiculous. Absolutely. They should be closing um, sometime shortly after 1 p.m. All right. AM in the yeah. morning. Very quickly before we go to the break, just a quick comment on the anti-cruising bylaw that has taken effect in Christchurch this week. Uh, to what extent do you think this will make a difference to the problems we have on our roads, Alec? Um, I think it'll make a minor difference, um, but from the point of view of uh, those people, those irresponsible young people with their very loud cars, I hope it makes a difference to them. I've had a gutsful of them uh, heading down to uh, down Yoldhurst Road and uh, mm. uh, out to wherever they go, somewhere in the country, um, at between mm. around 11 uh, p.m. and 3 in the morning. Are you concerned you're going to have more of them being dispersed out of the central city because of our bylaws here out to your place in Yoldhurst? Uh, no, I'm not. Um, I, I'm of the view that the police need to take a very strong um, stance on this. They did that with gangs in Timaru some years ago, and in fact they solved the problems. Um, we Should are, boy racists be considered in the same light as gangs? Um, n not so much, but if their cars are not meeting the criteria, and we get on television the same thing every time of, of people spinning wheels and mm. people mm. hanging mm. out car mm. doors and things like that. I've been in the city late on a Friday night or Saturday night just to have a look, yeah. and basically I'm not seeing that sort of stuff mm. um, but I am aware of large numbers of cars in convoy mm. going into sh in, into smaller streets and then creating havoc within mm. those streets that's right. unacceptable and the police need to address that sort yeah of I stuff. agree I agree with that I agree with that but the other bit is that when we come home again I often walk through I mean it's Fitzgerald Avenue which yes. we have to cross and you see a great convoy of cars coming through and these aren't though those kind of cars they're just ordinary cars with youngsters in I thought oh that'd be quite fun actually driving around like that. And they're not doing anything that's unpleasant. It's just a group of about 20, 30 cars going up and driving around. What's the noise like? The noise is fine. I mean, is it's the noise of cars driving around 50 k's, or just a little bit over, going along to its jail. Now, that's the nice side of it. Of course, there's the other bit. And of course, it's got to be stopped. And, and, and we do. But the other side of that, as we know, I think, is we need to be police, community, our advisors, whatever, youth workers, talking with these youngsters and coming alongside them. We have huge issues about young people in this country. The press this morning and the issue about youth suicide again and the dilemma that we've got that youngsters are developing sexually and physically much earlier yeah. and yet our brains, as I didn't know this, but our brains as human beings don't actually fully develop till we're in our 30s. So, you know, you've still got a way up. to go, Michael. Yes, I'm still yes, catching so, up. That's right. yes. But, but there's, there's, there's some real issues in there about how do we enable young people to 
cope with the complicated society we live in. All right. We'll come back to our guests, Peter Beck and Alec Neal, very shortly. Do stay with us.